This week... End of story. Fine. A fight to revive a hotel. The fact that you refuse to accept that makes it very difficult for me to work with you. Really, we should just shut it and bugger off. Is that well, what you say? Becomes a battle to keep my cool. Oh. <sighs> Hell. I object to that language as well. I think it'd be better if everybody went. <laughs> I've come to glorious East Devon. Families are a very important part of the tourist industry here. There's a lot of very varied accommodation, from camping to B&Bs to hotels. You ignore families at your peril. The picture book village of Branscombe is home to the Bullstone Hotel. Each room's got one double bed and then a second room with bunk beds in, but they're only really for children. Run for the past 20 years by Kevin and Judith Monaghan. Judith. When I'm in the middle of something, you always want me to do something. Turn around. They started out with an ambition to be one of the South West's first family-friendly hotels, proud to cater to the needs of children. We know what parents want for the children. We know what parents need and we cater for those needs. We have the playroom. We try and give an experience for the families to be able to enjoy it. It's a unique selling point. We want to give them an experience that they will remember for the rest of their lives. After two decades in the hotel trade, Kevin takes an old school approach. Well, I've put two websites and they won't let me get the third one. I don't like the internet. It's a horrible thing, and make it go away and come back to brochures. He's a quintessential English gentleman. He was born in the wrong year. <laughs> I tend to sit, sit in, in the lounge in here and talk to people. And Kevin's got to have somebody to talk to, because if we don't have guests, there's nobody to talk to, and I get fed up listening to him. Kevin plays host, wife Judith looks after everything else. Judith's the mainstay of the hotel. She's the head chef, she's the office manager. On occasion, she makes the beds and cleans the toilets. I need to go and find a quilt and a quilt cover. Yeah, jack of all trades and master of none is my favourite phrase. A decade ago, the hotel was at the top of its game. We were one of probably six or eight child-friendly hotels in the country, genuine child-friendly hotels. But today there are new hotels on the block which have stolen the Monaghan's thunder. Lots of other hotels decided that children were a good idea. You have hotels who advertise child-friendly, and quite frankly, about as friendly as a chocolate teapot. It just doesn't hold water. Vacancies, Kel surprise. The occupancy level has dropped quite alarmingly. We're lucky now if we're just over half full in the summer. We plough everything back into the business, including our pensions. I think Alex could give us the boost we need to move forwards again. You know, it's after 20 years you get into a, a rut. It, it looks pretty closed down. It doesn't look as if it's open for business. I'd like to bring the hotel back to where we were 15 or 20 years ago, which was one of the premier child-friendly hotels in the country. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice Hello. to meet you too. How are Do you? Do come in. I'm very well. Good. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Hello. Pleased How to meet you? you. Very nice to meet yeah. you. So, lots of signs on the door. Yeah. So, obviously, you were very successful. Yeah. We, we were. Yeah. yeah. Lots of they date, lots of them are slightly dated, dare I say. Very 2001, dated. 1999. Yeah. Well, that, was that your heyday? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we should probably scrape them off yeah. the window, because it suggests that... We're a bit out of date. It's always nice for guests to know that the hotel they're at has been recognised with awards for excellence but not when the award's almost 20 years old. If you'd like to come with me, I'll show you what facilities we have in the hotel Great. and uh, what we offer for families with 
children. Kevin wants to give me the grand tour, starting with the guest's TV lounge. I haven't seen a TV like that for a year or two. Because nowadays everything's flat screen, isn't it? So I'm going to take a photo of that so my daughter can see what it used to be like. <laughs> We're not a museum. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> this room gets very little use, that's why that's still here. I think the modern age, children have computers and they have laptops and they have whatever. Uh, I don't like the internet, but it is the way of the world. His astonishment that the TV lounge isn't used very much is not shared by me. <laughs> I have rarely seen a more dispiriting place to spend half an hour. And the out-of-date kit continues throughout. Parents' kitchen for the use of parents to make sandwiches, bottles, warm baby food. What's this? That I is guess that's... the most reliable microwave that we have. How old is it? I dread to think. Uh, it's hysterical, darling, again. It, it looks... <laughs> it's like a... It's like welcome to childhood as it used to be. But the guest kitchen comes with conditions. There must be a reason that you have not one but two signs here. This is not intended for cooking meals. Do people try and break the rules? People do take liberties. We had one family who set themselves up with a complete Indian meal. I did suggest them that, to them that we, uh, we did actually have a restaurant and we did serve food and this wasn't what it was for. And we actually asked them to leave. It seems for guests at the hotel, it's Kevin's way or the highway. I don't suffer fools gladly and I don't do into waffle. Upstairs are the hotel's family suites. So, children's room, no windows. I think lots of people would be slightly put off if they were told their children were sleeping in a room with no windows, but actually it does have its advantages. I can tell you that children don't wake up very early in the morning if the light isn't coming in. And actually, there's, it's quite well set up. But the parents' bedroom is a different matter. God. That colour. Honestly, it's so ugly. The decoration in the room is quite varied. And um, she may like some, she may like, she may like other rooms better than others. They obviously can't be trusted to decorate their own establishment because why anyone would paint a wall that colour of glossy royal blue is completely beyond me. Rooms like this always really depress me because actually it wouldn't take that much to make them a lot more livable. The hotel might have been all the rage a decade ago, but like the tired playroom, it simply won't meet what families want today. It's a great idea to have a playroom. Don't, I mean, I like the idea of a playroom, I really do. I've got a three-year-old and a seven-year-old. Oh, really? Yeah, so I think I'm kind of target market. But it's dated. Very. <laughs> the toys are out of date, but Kevin and Judith might be the hotel's saving grace, and I want to see them in action. You know I'm staying tonight? Yeah. Well, I've got some families coming to stay too. Right. Right. I want to see whether it's viable that this goes back to being a child-friendly, you know, the kind of yeah. hotel that's good for children, and whether actually you've got the energy to kind of do it all still. Come on, then, let's right, go. Right, let's go. Right. <laughs> You're now panicking. I've seen a face. I've seen the person. I also kept bent into tears, and I don't know. Next, my guests descend. And if all he's going to do is talk to guests and get out them, talk to them. Along with my spirits. Really, we should just shut it and bugger off. Is that well, what you're saying? Well, in, to, in, I'm, I'm not. I'm. Like, just give me a minute. The Bullstone is a hotel that is stuck in the past. It's kind of like a time warp. It's like a visitor experience, in inverted commas. They could sell tickets for it. Come and see how we used to live back in the olden days. Shit. <laughs> to find out if owners Kevin and Judith have a flair for family-friendly service, I've dropped a bombshell. Hello. Hello. Uh, 
Kevin. Hi, Kevin and Wendy. Pleased to meet you. Wendy? Come this way. I've booked in four families as surprise guests for the night. I had no idea she was going to do that to us. Um, I don't know whether to feel scared, upset, worried. <laughs> They'll deliver their verdict on their overall experience in the morning. Can they really handle a whole load of families with children? You know, is there any point in encouraging them to believe that they can be successful again? Um, unless actually I believe it, how am I going to sell it to anybody else? Well, you go that way. You go that way. Kevin runs front of house, and I'm keen to see his approach. Come on, that way. And how Judith copes behind the scenes. It's nice to have something to focus on. This buzz is, is good. It's better than sitting twiddling my thumbs. Here we go. Oh, look. There we go. Do you think that's your bedroom? It's nice to have a full hotel and, uh, and have it busy. Reminds of the old days when we were busy all the time. What are your first impressions? My bed. Um, be honest. Be honest. When I come in, it reminded me a lot of like a residential type care home. It's very dated. Um, and it feels a bit cold. It all just looks like it's falling to pieces and it's been a long time since anyone's given this place any TLC. The standard cleanliness, I'm hoping, is right. When staff have, staff have cleaned a room or a bathroom, Get on their hands and knees and go around at child height and see if it's clean. Clean on two levels, if you like. What's that? What is that? A trip down memory lane awaits the guests in the hotel's restaurant. They're very hot. You'll have to blow or get mummy to blow. Kevin insists on a 1950s approach to dinner, with two sittings three hours apart. Children eat first, then are packed off to bed leaving the adults to eat without them. Meal times with children are traumatic. And hopefully they'll all go to bed and curl up quietly in the corner somewhere. And then we can serve evening meal and get some civilised diners in the dining room. Kevin's belief that children should be seen and not heard might have worked when the hotel first opened, but his old-fashioned spit meal time means parents are left standing around whilst Judith is run ragged in the kitchen cooking for two separate sittings. I need time when they've had tea to clear up ready for the next instalment. With Judith slaving over the stove, Kevin should be playing host, but he is strangely absent from the restaurant. Go on and do what you do best. I well, thought you were, the that away. <laughs> you were the talker. Yeah. Don't talk to people. Well, they're, they're quite happy. We generally leave them with children's tea. All right. Fine. And let them... I think to point out it's a little bit confused. You can't, can't quite see my role. My role tends to come in after children's tea, when the children have disappeared and, and, and the parents. I don't do children uh, in that sense. Somebody wanted a potato with cheese and beans. Yeah, and that's to, just a cheese, is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. While Kevin stands around, I step in to help no, Judith. Shall I get you all some water? Yeah. Here you go. An hour into kids' tea, and embarrassingly, our grown-up guests are being ignored. Grown-ups, would you rather than a tea or coffee have a glass of something stronger? Because I certainly would. <laughs> Don't know about you, but I'm ready for a gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> Might be best to have everybody eat it together, what, like we would at home, and then have something going on afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So then, then it's quite a big gap between the kids eating and the grown-ups eating, isn't it? Six o'clock. The parents will have two hours until dinner. You know the building's cold. Everyone's slightly depressed and miserable. I, I feel kind of sorry for the families who are here because I don't want to be here, let alone here with my kids. First sitting over, it's bedtime for the youngsters. And just when I thought Kevin's approach couldn't get any odder, range of about a mile and a half, or from one end of a super tanker to the other. He hands out the hotel's unique child monitoring system. Testing, testing. That works. That works. Yeah, brilliant. OK, so I just leave that in the bedroom. In the bedroom. Stand it up. Oh, lovely. All right, thank you so much, Kevin. That's great. Yeah, I can talk, you can talk back to him through this one. OK. Right. Thanks, Kevin. 
Not bad. That's it tastes better stopped. than they look, I would say. Right. Three hours into her shift, Judith now has to serve up another full menu to the grown-ups. Judith's amazing. I mean, she's spinning so many plates in the air, and all with a smile on her face that I really, really admire her. I just think, you know, Kevin's a dead weight. You know, if all he's going to do is talk to guests and get out there and fucking talk to them. Uh, yes, lovely, thank you. But by the time Kevin decides to play host, it's too little, too late. Nobody really knows how this place works. You know, you don't really know when, when dinner is, when the kids are being fed, what to do between, between dinner and, and um, tea for the kids. Uh, We're not doing the bar. Uh, I cannot fault Judith's enthusiasm but everything else is a massive problem and I don't know, I don't have anything really to build on. If Kevin had been ultimately the most marvellous host, that would have given me some reassurance. But actually, I feel disappointed about everything that I've seen so far. Where do I start here? <sighs> the next morning and after a surprisingly comfortable night, it's time for me to face the guests. Good morning. Good morning. Despite her late finish, Judith has been up since 5 a.m. to prepare and serve breakfast single-handed. Kevin's getting up slowly because he's he didn't have a good night. So. Could you possibly sit with Mummy this morning? Just makes it a bit easier for for catering, as it were. Okay. Right. It's all about what's easy for them, as opposed to what actually works for the, for the guests. Now they've had the full hotel experience, I'm keen to hear what my guests really think. It is like coming to stay with your grandparents. I do like the playroom, even though it's like a bit dated. Yeah, I think quite. for your gut age, I mean, yeah, that is about the yeah. maximum yeah. that you could play. I mean, you know, we need some stuff for older children. I mean, I really like the room sizes. They're really quite... Quite big room. Did you worry about how much it would take to bring it up to a... To make a significant a, difference. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's everywhere. My experiment is over, and my findings are that this hotel is at least 10 years out of date. First of all, feedback from guests. Yeah. They liked you two, which is no surprise to me. The decor's quite old-fashioned. Yeah. How things are done and displayed and served is quite old-fashioned. I think what we need to do is emphasise the positives about an old-fashioned holiday, i.e. time spent with the family and encouragement not to use electronics. This is a weekend like we used to do, come down for a weekend to Devon to show their kids what life used to be like. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I've got three and seven-year-olds, yeah. so I'm your perfect, in a way, target market. Yeah. Yeah. I'm much more likely, if I came with my husband and our kids, we'd probably eat together, cos I, I think, again and again, that is what I see when I go to child-friendly yeah. hotels. Parents want to engage with their children. But also, we need to ramp up the playroom. Yes. Um, because there's quite a lot for little children, but, you know, what do the older ones have there? There's nothing. There's nothing. You need stuff for kids, older kids, to yeah. play with. We had foot games in the playroom. I mean, the, the playroom, when they started out, was quite tidy. This morning, it's a dip. Well, of well, course, it's and, children, and, and, love. Yeah, and I children mean... do tend to wreck games. Um, they, uh, well, because they play with things. Yeah. Yes, but they don't care. I also think we should have a proper telly with a DVD player, and every night there is a film on. Yeah. If children want to watch DVDs, watch them in the bedroom, yeah. under the supervision of the parents. I, I, I know, but... I'm and I won't go back on that. No, I'm telling you what I think yeah. that families yeah. need. Yeah. It's a toss-up whether you call it dogged determination or stubbornness. Of course I want people and places to succeed, but it's essential to be pragmatic and recognise when the odds are unavoidably stacked against you. To survive, a business has to evolve, but it's becoming obvious Kevin is resistant to change. I'd like to see what effect that has had on the hotel's bottom line. So, young man. Yes, dear. Do you know the facts and figures of your financial situation? I haven't a clue. OK. I, I don't get involved, involved with, with finance. Do you, know I don't really your, get... do you know your profit and loss? No. Well, how do you know if you can keep on going? I don't. I don't want to know. I know, but 
Darling, bear I don't. Way. Fine. I know, but I don't know quite how I'm allowed. I'm going to be able to help you if we don't kind of face some realities Dr. together. Judith. Yes, but you have to be part of that discussion, dear. I've not been for the last 20 years. Uh, if I probably knew what the situation was, I would go into a steep decline and um, be no good for anybody. I'm quite happy to talk to guests and let it happen. I wouldn't sleep at night if I knew what the financial situation was. I know, darling, but I don't understand how I'm supposed to... End of story. To... Fine. Fine. I'm not... I can't. I can't. I don't know what I can talk to you about. What's the point of... Financially, I can't talk to you about it, because I, I sincerely don't know. No, but I can't... What can I talk to you about, then? What is the point about me talking to you about anything? You don't do the rooms, you don't do the food, you don't do the financials. Fine, I'll find Judith. Yeah. Best thing to do. When a couple run a hotel, they often have very distinct roles. It can be a great way for a small business to run. But at the Bullstone, there's absolutely no balance. You're spinning a lot of plates. I'm in great admiration of you. I think you're doing an amazing job. I really do. When was the last good financial year that you had? It was probably... 2004, five-ish. The most profit we've probably ever made while we've been here is, is less than 10,000. But we don't have any spare cash for improvements. Uh, any spare cash tends to get taken up with crisis. I don't really understand why you want this business. I mean, you've, your, your husband, because of, you know, I understand that he's not capable, but he, so he can't actually physically help, but he also can't handle the stress of the financials no, and everything No, but he, he, he handles people. He's very much a people person. Oh, I know, darling, but um, you can't keep a business going just because he likes right, talking to so people. Right, so, really, we should just shut it and bugger off. Is that well, what you're saying? Uh, well, in, to, in, I'm, I'm not... I'm... Like, just give me a minute. <laughs> I know, but what... No, I'm, I'm not cross, I just... Because it's our life. We live here, it's our home, it's our life. And the ideal would be to have more business so we'd have a better income, so we could employ staff and oh, then we I could know. sit back. I that know. is the ideal. I'm too young to sit back and do nothing. They're not ready to call it a day, but I think their hopes and expectations are unrealistic. I've tried to be as honest as possible without being brutal with them. But the reality is, with very little money in the bank, very little income, their own ailing health, you know, you, you just, it's, this is gonna be a tough hotel to turn around. <laughs> In Devon, I'm trying to help the Bullstone Hotel. But I've had some bad news. Kevin has had an accident. He fell over and has broken his leg. He's just come back from hospital. I think I already felt like the Bullstone was quite desperate last time I visited. Now things are even more dire. You know, Judith was the motor of the hotel already. And the fact that she now has to run around after Kevin too is definitely not helpful. Well, all the stickers have gone at least. Hi, darling. Hi, how are you? Better than you, I believe. Oh, I don't know. How's Kevin doing? Um, he's all right. How long is he going to be laid up? He'll be in a wheelchair or on crutches within the next six weeks or so, so... Are you going to come and yeah, have a word I'll, with I'll him? Come. come on. Lead uh, the let's way. Let's go and... Hi, darling. Hello, dear. <laughs> How are you? Can I sit down? Yes, yeah. you sit down. Despite the accident, the Monaghans are determined to keep the hotel open. So I've come with a battle plan to take some pressure off Judith. 
I just think that there has to be more of a self-service element. There has to be more of a relaxed attitude. And everyone likes feeling that they can get something as soon as they want it, rather than having to wait for it. I would like to spend some money cheering up the playroom. I'd like to bring a whole load of kit that they can borrow, like the buckets and spades and the yeah. boogie boards and the wind cheaters and the wind brakes and things, and actually say, come and borrow it, write it down, write your name in, say what you take, and off you go, see you later. You know, I think we want to make it so it's just more interactive. It's easier. It's yeah, easier. Yeah. I've done comparisons in the area to find out yeah. basically what people are paying. Yeah. I think we should drop the price down to £100 a night so that families could stay here for £700 a week. Oh, right. Realistically, as a budget hotel. In a budget hotel. Because we're well, not a couple a of hundred pounds a night. You, know. you are a budget hotel, Donna. Yeah. You're a budget hotel. What do you think a budget hotel is these days? You tell me. You could go and stay at a campsite for more money than it would cost you to spend here, darling. But a campsite will have a pool yeah. and it'll have swings, it'll have children's activities. Mm -hmm. There's no way, Alex, I'm going for budget daughter. Yeah, I, well, I don't, I'm Come not on. trying to insult you. No, I know you're not. I, I, I think know, it was an insult. No. What I'm saying is, you can still do your meals. I would like to cut down your meals a bit, your offering. I would like you to be able to say, if you want to instead make a boiled egg or some pasta or some no. toast. No way are people cooking in this place hotel. We have a restaurant which we want to improve Kevin, on and we want to build on. Sweetheart, in which case, what's the point of having invited Alex to come? I wanted to suggest that you did it so that it was a bit more relaxed for people, so it wasn't, it didn't have to be a formal sit-down dinner every night. Yeah, we can... That, that's I, I, well, I, Because I struggle with that, darling. I struggle with no, the restaurant. I struggle Kevin. with the fact that you don't have anyone doing drinks. You're still pretending to do it, but it's not being done very well. You know, who do you, what do you think, what are you comparing this to? Oh, <sighs> fucking hell. I object to that language as well. I'm not being described as a budget hotel. You're not, on camera. Kevin, no. I'm not being described as a budget hotel. I'm not having people Kevin, half and half stop stuff. it. <laughs> Just stop it. I think it'd be better if everybody went. I really do feel like leaving. I feel like giving up. I don't want to make him be more upset or more cross. I don't want Judith to cry. I don't, you know, I'm here to supposedly help them. I look around this place and there needs to be improvements in every single area. The whole thing is dilapidated. They don't have an idea. I mean, he's living in La Land. Despite Kevin's opposition, I'm still determined to make this work, if only for Judith's sake. I really want you to understand that this is a purposefully slightly old-fashioned hotel where families have holidays like they used to. We've really got to make a virtue of this being a kind of classic yeah, family yeah. holiday. I think that's fine. I mean, and if you're doing something in here, do me one big favour. Yeah. Put a new light fitting. I, I, do, I definitely. <laughs> I can see some of where she was coming from, but the more and more and more I think about it, Kevin, it, it's not going to be what would work here on a practical level. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see what else comes up. Kevin's confined to his bed with his leg. I'm desperate for some extra help. With Kevin in bed, their friends have rallied around to help. Morning. Oh, Annie, thanks, thanks for coming. Alex wants us to give the lounge a really good clear out, as it were. <laughs> Careful. I failed to get an agreement on my ideas to make this family hotel more user friendly, but Judith has agreed to have a clear out. Judith, are you there? Can you hear me? Over. Hello, I'm going to come and sort you out in a minute. But Kevin isn't happy. It's destroying history. It's destroying the continuity and the history of what we were and what we are. What about these antlers? Um, stick them at the bottom of the stairs and I'll put them upstairs for now. I don't like change. He, he's not going to let us get rid of cones, is he? We'll put them in the basket. I don't like throwing things away. You throw something away, you throw a bit of the spirit of the place away. 
In a bid to get Kevin to accept my brave new world, I've sent over designs for the rooms I'd like to change. Right. What on earth is a mood board? Presumably that's a lampshade, that's a fridge freezer, we've already got that. Spoon rack, well, there's a, there's a drawer. Uh, a cutler. New toaster and kettle, no, I won't go with that. New one. kettle, yes. Tea towels, they do get changed. New cutlery, yeah, OK. Yeah. Crockery, we don't want crockery in the kitchen. And my plan for the new playroom gets short shrift too. Just looking at it. I don't want blackboard paint. Wall stickers to add interest to wall, no. Ceiling light, no. Uh, no. no. So the next room is the old playroom. Let's have a look. I'm sorry, but no, it is not becoming a cloak room. Scrap that completely. Yeah, so Wipe go on, it out. Go on to the next. Kevin is against my ideas, and he has some grand designs of his own. We may have to look at diversifying, may even sort of look at making a very upmarket uh, hotel who consider themselves elite, marketing the hotel to clients who would want to book the whole of the hotel for themselves and their entourage. There is one thing above all else that can be the undoing of a business and stop it moving on, and that is when the people in charge have delusions of grandeur. I've nothing against someone dreaming big, but ultimately you have really got to be honest with yourself and recognise what it is you've got. I want the Monaghans to see a hotel that gets its family-friendly offering just right. The good news is, a few weeks later, Kevin is out of bed and mobile, so I've sent him and Judith on a little day trip. How on earth can this compare to us? This is such a beautiful spot. Located down the coast from the hotel, the four-star Sawmill Cove might seem a grander proposition, but it offers families one very important thing, informality. Hello, welcome Hello. to Sawmill Cove. Hello, I'm Graham Monaghan. And I'm Hello. Keith, sir. Hello. I've asked owner Keith to show the Monaghans one of the hotel's family suites. What we do is we, we sort of try and make it a bit easier for the families because when you see their cars all piled to the gunnels, the last thing they want to do is bring the buckets and spades and all of that sort of stuff, which costs so little. I mean, but they make such a big difference. Um, games and things like that are nice and making sure they're, they're smart and clean. And it means we do have to chuck them out every five minutes and buy new ones. But again, they're not, they're not big things. Um, we don't have a high-tech system for watching movies, but we, you know, we have, they can borrow DVDs. It makes them feel much more part of a sort of family environment. It's all the sort of stuff I suppose we have but don't particularly advertise the fact, do we? No. We've looked around this hotel, it's a four-star hotel, with accolades coming out of its ears, and it's not doing anything we can't do. It is. It, the, apart from the location and the sea it's, view. It's the location which we ain't got. But everything but a sea view. Kevin's belief that the Bullstone is on a par with this hotel is slightly worrying, but at least they like the decor. I actually like the colour scheme. Yeah. Um, I like the, the wallpaper as well, it's got boats on it. Yeah, it's perhaps something like this in the, in the, in, in the kitchen and to lighten the kitchen up. It's not kitchen. till you look at it that you realise the parents' kitchen was quite grotty. Yeah. I think we've got to, we've got to give it a whirl and see what happens. Yeah. Um, we can't go on as we are. No, no. Thank you. Get, get, get. What? <laughs> it's all right. I was leaning on the back and you shot up. Shot off. I think... In, get, stop. Thanks for having yeah. me, Keith. Yeah. You take care. I think at the end of, at the, end of the day, um, it's been a successful visit. We've got some ideas and um, the ethos is the same as what we have. Yes, I think we can take something positive over us. Let Alex get on with some ideas that she has. I've been working to bring the Bullstone Hotel into the 21st century. After a great deal of resistance to my ideas, Kevin has finally allowed me to take on the guest kitchen, the playroom, and the TV lounge. With the summer season about to start, I'm back. 
Last time I saw Kevin, he was shouting and screaming at me. So I'm not quite sure how they're going to welcome me, whether they're going to be pleased to see me or not. Are you going to be polite to her, or are you going to wind her up? I'm always polite, let's start. No, you're not always polite. Well, it depends how she speaks to you. When I left, Judith was struggling to keep the business afloat single-handedly. Hello, hello. I'm in the back kitchen if you're looking for me. Hiding behind the fridge. Hiding behind the fridge, yeah. I'm really worrying about you. How are you? Helping, in my own sweet way. We seem to be getting, at the moment, a couple of bookings coming through every day for later in the year. I've got bookings through now till the middle of September, so... So that's Not good. oceans, but enough. In a way, you want the summer to be really busy. And in another way, I don't want it to be too busy, because now Kevin's kind of disabled in the way that he is. Yeah, but you've, I think what you've got to bear in mind and what is the fact that Kevin didn't do a lot physically in the hotel anyway. Well, Judith is nothing if not realistic. And there's news about the hotel's meal times too. You're still doing split tea times? If that's what people want. We're offering both. Oh, We're offering are you? family meals. Oh, that's nice. Or darling. children's tea and dinner. You can tweak things. You don't always have to do things the same way. No, no. You can try and make life a bit easier for yourself. Yeah. I think you've shown us that. I think accepting the need to change is difficult, and yet at the same time, you know you've got to change. Change is definitely the order of the day in the playroom. Doesn't this look nice? <laughs> I've ditched the old dolls and books to create a much more appealing and family-friendly space. Plus, families can borrow kit from wellies to boogie boards. And there's a dedicated craft table for kids. The dingy, outdated TV lounge is now a safe, enclosed playroom for toddlers, with plenty of toys to keep them occupied. Although Kevin still refuses to allow any cooking, at least I've managed to spruce up the guest kitchen. And there's even a new microwave. Good to see you up and about. Okay. Last time I saw you, you were bed-bound. I was indeed. How do you feel about the changes that I've made? Uh, we, we like the decoration and, uh, and all the furniture and the, the fittings that's come in. It's, it looks nice. It, it's different. We have had a tough old, rough old ride. I mean, I'm glad it's nice that I'm having a conversation with you now and neither of us are shouting at each other. But I think more than anything, I just wanted to point out to you that over the years, guest expectations and I've guests... Changed. Yes. Mm. And you've got to kind of try and be a bit flexible to change with them. Everything I'm trying to do is what that initial idea, which was to reposition the Ballstone as kind of proudly old-fashioned family hotel. Yeah. And I really like that. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, I'm just hoping, that with the cosmetic changes that we made, that the reviews will start coming and that they'll be a bit better. Because these days, everything is so reviewer-led. You know, that really makes a difference to whether people book or not. I think it's nice that we've resolved our differences. You know, I did what I did with the, with the best intentions, and um, I know that Kevin only wants the best for his hotel, so ultimately we had to agree to disagree. But it seems I have won one concession from Kevin in the shape of a brand new state-of-the-art barbecue. This is one element where we all agreed about the self-service yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, they can come out They can and... come out here and cook their own yeah. food and eat it at a picnic table, couldn't they? Do you think you can see the benefit of just keeping yes. up with the times? Yeah, because I think it's not until you see the changes that you realise how dated things were. You know in your head what you've got to do, but it, it's combining head and heart to I make know. it happen. I know. And you've motivated us to make it happen, oh, so... Good. Now the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Yes. Yeah. Let's see what your guests and their children think about it. And also, they might point out to you ways that you might still further improve. Yeah. And I'm absolutely sure that everything will work much better. I was really dreading today. I was disappointed with how everything has kind of panned out here. And I couldn't really see how the situation was going to be salvaged, but to my amazement, 
it's ended up being a more positive story than I could possibly have hoped for. I mean, Kevin and Judith definitely feel as if they've had some benefit from this, which, of course, matters enormously to me. A week later, and the first families of the summer arrive at the Bullstone. Look at the statue. Look, it's this. So I think this might have changed a bit from what you remember. It has, it's fantastic. When we came to Bullstone before, we didn't really use the planarium. Now, it's a lovely, it looks really arty, really well laid out. Um, loads of things going on here. It's just a really nice light space. Look at this. <gasps> what is That's it? Right. Look, we've got fishnets here. <laughs> Cool. Mummy and Daddy haven't bought fishnets, so stuff like this is really good. We've walked into something that we've never had in a hotel before. But at home, we've got a shed load of buckets and spades and fishnets. Absolutely superb. Well, that's no good for you, is it? No. So what size do you need? I'm so pleased the guests like the changes I've made, but I was never going to please everyone. I hate to say it, and I don't want to say it, but Alex brought new ideas in and to a point, wouldn't listen to experience. Do you think we've modernised it and we're not sort of, uh, sort of 20 years in the past now? I didn't mind you being 20 years in the past, but that's because that's we didn't come for the deck or we came for the, for the TLC. When we came to the Bullstone, and, and bear in mind we'd had experience prior to, um, Alex was only in the 20s. So I suppose our knowledge and experience is, in effect, a lot greater than than Alex. Fetch me a drink. Do you have to pass me a drink or I'll get all croaky? <laughs>